a first look at the team that will represent the United States at the upcoming Olympics. It'll be interesting to watch, uh, Doris. Two of the top point guards in the college ranks are here, and Sue Bird and Brandy McCain, who we'll see a little later. We travel the, the world a lot. You know, we, we did a lot of, of touring. It wasn't just one tour. It was a lot of touring with um, a lot of different, you know, um, core players of a team and then other players that were trying to make the team. So that, that kind of training gave us a really great broad pool base of, of who potentially could be on that 2000 team. Because there's so many players that um, are capable of being an Olympian, but man, when it gets down to 12, ooh, it's tough, you know, to make that final pick. So it gave us a lot of opportunity to, to um, see a lot of players, see who meshed well, and what would be the best team. So those tours um, going around the world um, were very instrumental in how we chose the team. Only five personal fouls allowed today as Nell Fortner looks on. She is tied right now with Tara Vanderveer for the most wins in USA basketball history, so she can set the record with a win today. She's got 88 Ws since taking over in 1997. Kelly Schumacher gets two. Now, after what was the primary objective today, she said to play the defense that we did in the second 20 minutes yesterday against Brazil. They dominated in the second half, and she wants to see that kind of consistent effort for 40 minutes. Yolanda Griffith. She has been very hot since Team USA got back together in late August. Yeah, offense isn't going to be a problem for this Olympic team. Before Cheryl Swoops got there, they averaged over 80 points a game. It's whether or not they defend consistently. Nice backdoor cut by Ferdinand, but swatted out of bounds by Griffith and Leslie. Well, we just showed you the strengths of this basketball team. They close extremely well. The athletes that you have in Griffith and Leslie can make up for a lot of mistakes defensively. Doris, does that allow the perimeter players to really get after it and take more chances as well? No question. You know you've got a tremendous safety net and intimidating shot blockers. Go ahead out and get up and guard people. Three on two for the U.S. Leslie takes her time and finishes. Major challenge. I think in the backcourt, the select team can compete, but physically and emotionally, the difference in maturity level here is drastic. Bird handles the pressure, looks to feed it to Wyckoff. And the held ball underneath as Teresa Edwards was able to slide down there and tie it up. And Sue Bird has got her hands full. She has handled pressure beautifully through her collegiate days, but uh, a little bit different defender on her today. <laughs> And I would imagine a new level of speed and pace that they mm. are seeing here against the U.S. national team. And Schumacher gets two more. Nice little baby hook. Quickly on the break again, Leslie finishes for Team USA. The select team knows transition defense is job one. Their post players have got to be able to keep up with Leslie and Griffith. And if they don't, it's going to be layup lines. Edwards all over Wyckoff. She throws it away. Edwards running with Griffith, and Yolanda's there to lay it in. And you see the pace of the game, and already transition points, a problem for the select team. Bird kicks it off to Ferdinand, and she draws the foul on the drive. You know, we, we were used to when 96 came around and they trained the whole year and traveled and did a college exhibition games, and really promoted women's basketball, USA basketball, and, and you know, a couple of leagues, you know, professional leagues came out of that. Um, so when we got around to 2000, it was really set up somewhat similar. Um, weren't together all the time, but we had a couple of weeks together and maybe a week home um, and coming back and, and doing that. So it was similar with just a little less um, time together, um, but very much set up the same to make sure that we had a long period of training, that you had a group of of, of your team together um, so that you could prepare and train and get really familiar with each other. And we did a college tour again. We traveled around, played college teams. Um, and then obviously when we get closer to the Olympics, you kind of go to places right before the Olympics that are close or on your way, um, you know, to try to get in games. Uh, so we were lucky enough to go to Hawaii um, not only <laughs> to train, but to, to have a little sun and a little bit of relaxation as well. And the ease with which it occurred. 
Leslie now with six early on for the United States. Griffith crashing over press row. Well, Aloha. It's football season. We'll give her an unassisted uh, tackle and the sack on that play. Big hand from the crowd here at the Sheriff Center. That's why you love Yolanda Griffith, because she comes with it every single night. She plays as hard as anybody. Giving up the body to try and get the loose ball, that is just sensational effort. Good hustle by Griffith. This is her first shot at a gold medal. And one of the relative newcomers has the fewest international games under her belt of the Olympic team this year. Yeah, she's an unusual case because she didn't play Division I college basketball and was a relative unknown until her ABL days. She's an unusual situation in USA basketball. Bird can't get that one to go. Leslie keeps it alive. Now McCray on the run. Can't convert. Griffin, the follow, counter. The first thing that really stands out is just how incredibly talented every player on that team was. The, the way that they, we could get out in transition, I mean, that was in, ridiculous. Whether we were rebounding the ball defensively and going or whether we were stepping out of bounds to inbound it, we were laying it up on the other end. We were so fast and so in tune to, to running and pushing that tempo. Um, that was really incredible. But then watching Lisa Leslie and Yolanda Griffith, just dominate the paint. They were, those are <laughs> just phenomenal players in there. Two different kinds of players, because Lisa could stretch the floor, you know, from the three-point line, and, and Yolanda could just clean up everything on the glass on both ends of the floor. But then you've got Cheryl Swoops at the peak of her game. I mean, she's playing, she's just playing her best basketball at this point in time, and she was so much fun to watch. So sometimes you could just catch yourself Watching as a coach is going, wow. <laughs> you know? Wow, these guys, they're really good. You know, they're just so good. So it was just, it was a lot of fun to coach them. They were a mature group of, of young women that were fun to be around on a daily basis. Worked hard, never had to um, motivate them to practice hard. Just a fun group to be around. Well, outstanding transition basketball again. And fast break points an issue right now. They're unable to get out and defend that particular phase. Gray picks up her second personal. 14-5, the Olympic team on top. Carter on the steal. Long three. Puts it in. Vince Carter. Nice feed back to Richardson. Some flash of their own. Ray Allen right to the hole. Oh, Ray Allen leaves inside. Blocked by Vince Baker. Two on uh -oh. one. Kid. Uh -oh. and Carter. <laughs> oh. Vince Carter. Friend, definite uh, husky feeling on the floor. The one thing about Sue Bird is that you know she is a student of the game, and um, she just has—I mean, she just has what it takes to be a point guard and to run a team. Um, and she's been very, she was very successful in college, and obviously you could tell that USA basketball is going to be in good hands, you know, and just you know having a chance to you know guard her. Um, I mean, she handled pressure with grace. I mean, she she was being guarded by players that have been pros for a while, and she handled that. Um, but she just she's just a student of the game, very poised. She knows how to run a team. She knows how to make players around her better. And people like to play with her. They want to play with her, and that's half the battle. And she she was a very likable person, and people wanted to play with her because she was a winner. Conference tournament. And a win against Evansville. And they cannot get that one to go. Ralph there, though, with the rebound, the putback. Good hustle by the select squad to keep it alive. Well, that's Shea Ralph's game. And I've said it over and over. She's not a player who blows your way with skills, but as intense a competitor as you want. Bonnie Henderson really loved her intensity and the leadership that she provided to this team. 
She tries the lob there to Schumacher. Denied. Swoops out ahead of the pack. And she's fouled on the play. See, here's your choice if you're the select team. <laughs> you got to send bodies to the boards, but then you're going to get hurt doing this. And if you turn it over, it's lights out. And McCain and Ralph try to make the play. But Shay Ralph, Beth, there's questions about whether or not she could play at the next level. I don't think there's any question because she is an extremely smart, tough, and incredibly intense basketball player. She can shoot the ball. She can get where she needs to go and very creative around the basket. She embodies what Bonnie Henriksen was talking about with this team. They are all very unselfish. And I think in the case of Shea Ralph, she probably likes a, a, a pretty pass better than she does the two points. Yeah, there's no question. You, you know, two years ago, she scored a little bit more than she did last year, but became a better basketball player and enjoyed the other facets, led the team in assists. Collides there with Milton. Let squad will keep it. Although they blow about 10 seconds off of the shot clock. Boy, McCain, a player that Carol Ross at Florida would love to stay, see stay healthy. Ralph off the dribble, and she's fouled by Katie Smith. Call number 14, Katie Smith. It's her first personal fourth team foul. There's a look at Katie. The 26-year-old out of Lord, Ohio, and it's Delisha Milton all alone for the finger roll. And Bonnie Henriksen's club, she's going to face pressure all day. Nelson, we're going to press the full 40 or the good majority of it. Anderson trying to work down low on Griffith. Yeah, she had some pretty good position. McCain just never could get the angle with the dribble. Styles floats around and in, out, and knocked out of bounds by the U.S. team. Some terrific races shaping up down the stretch here in Major League Baseball this season. And that's too easy a pass. See, you need better pressure on a basketball if you're the USA Select team, because right now, look at all those excellent passes. That comes too easily for the Olympic team. First bucket Deanna for Jackson. Natalie Williams, followed by Deanna Jackson, who has come on for the U.S. Select Team out of UAB. Well, there's the double, and Cheryl that ever aware of the nice ball shooting, side cut by shot. Williams. And physically, Natalie Williams may be the most imposing to this group of collegians. You know you're a pretty good athlete when you are your state's, in her case, the state of Utah's athlete of the century. <laughs> not the year, not the decade. A tremendous two-sport star out of UCLA. Yeah, Williams thought her Olympic dreams would come true on the volleyball court, not the basketball court. Twenty-one to five. Team USA eight for eleven, and most of those coming on the run and in the paint. Here's a player who's got to shoot the ball for the United States. Katie Smith, she has really yet to get on track because she is a phenomenal shooter when she gets going. Swoops off the dribble baseline by Lori Payne, and Deanna Jackson has the rebound. Jackson led UAB, the real surprise team in last year's NCAA tournament. They did some damage out west. Ferdinand had to change her shot because of Swoops D. And now Cheryl playing a little hole. Bothered by Bird, can't finish. A nice little hustle there by Bird. She's her point guard, so she's a safety and responsible for that. That's great hustle. The lob down low. Nice catch by Camille Cooper, but stepped on the line. In for Team USA. Substitution coming on for Team USA. Shamika Holtzclaw. Another all-star season with the Washington Mystics this summer. And not too far removed from this group of collegians. Got out yeah. in 99, the rookie of the year in the WNBA. They swing it around a whole straw on the low block. Couple of chances for Shemekwa. I think that's where Shemekwa is at her best, around the bucket. 
Yeah, she's gotten away from it a little bit. The WNBA is content to shoot jump shots, but she's a solid post-up player, excellent rebounder. You'd love to see her stay a little bit closer to the hoop. Selecting, trying to get some offense generated. On the wrong end right now of a 19 to one run. Pretty look by Lori Payne, but Jackson couldn't hang on to it. Time out in Honolulu, Team USA up early. Certainly a player who's adjusted her game. She's not a true one. We talked about those point guard concerns. And she's adjusted her game at every level to do whatever the team needs. And I'll tell you, in 97, that was the first time that those two players connected on a USA team under Nell Fortner. And it was Edwards who took Shamiqua under her wing. And Shamiqua has the highest regard. They were roommates on, on that... Uh, World Championship qualifying tour, and Shamiko ended up leading the team in scoring and rebounding. And even Teresa Edwards' participation, pretty pass. Oh, Teresa Edwards' participation oh, in that 97 World event was really out of loyalty to Nell Fortner for no other reason. Typically, after an Olympic year, your veteran, your core players step aside and take a breather from USA Basketball. She chose to help Nell in her first exposure coaching. Ferdinand stripped by Staley. The United States has numbers four on one. Dawn, the hesitation, and gets the pass to Shamiqua to draw the foul. Now, if you can try to stop basketball a little bit sooner than this, because you get the strip right there by Williams. And then that turns it the other direction, Beth. And if you can't stop the basketball here, well, guess what's going to happen? Layup. Nice assist by Williams. And a real good look there at the versatility of the post players for Team USA. They don't just give you the points and the rebounds, but they're running the floor. Mm. They're assisting. And they're playing solid defense. Kelly Schumacher, two for three. For the select team, the rest of the club is 0 for, wow, 0 for 10. Yeah, I was ready to show up because, you know, a dream of being, a, you know, Olympian uh, competing for a gold medal was definitely on my, on my list. Um, I had gotten hurt in 98. I tore my ACL. And so it was just, you know, you're just like, all right, let's do it. Let's make sure that you're you're ready to, to do and play. Uh, but I was one of the, the babies. Um, you know, you have your – the vets, Don and Lisa and, and, and those guys, um, Teresa, just, uh, you know, Ruthie. I mean, it's just a, you look at the squad and there, you watched them in 96, you've been able to play with them. And I always love that USA basketball, like, you know, Jennifer Azy, all those guys taught us and showed us, not necessarily taught, I mean, they just showed us the way. This is how you go about business. This is the work you put in. This is how we carry ourselves. Um, this is what this is the legacy that they've created, and they 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 taught us this is how we do it. There's no no if ands or buts. This is you know what you're going to be a part of it, and that's resonates you know with me and all of those guys and respecting them and what they did and they led us, and then ultimately you get that chance to then pass that down to the next generation of the younger players so that they can continue the legacy um, that people have done before me, we did, and then now they're carrying on. So, yeah, I was a baby. So I was like one of those, like, whatever you need, <laughs> let's do it. Um, you know, and just, and those that had been there before kind of understood the process and what they're going to go through and what the Olympics are going to be. And, you know, some of us, the babies, you know, Griffith and, and uh, you know, we were just like, you're like every day is something new, um, but you know, you're eager and, and willing to do whatever. Ten now for Lisa, who has scored in double figures every time she's put on a USA basketball jersey. That's an incredible mm -hmm. run. Yeah, talk about consistency. Yesterday against Brazil, she scored her 2,500th point for the red, white, and blue during her career. That's a good solid post up by Cooper, but she's got to come up with that basketball and have the defense behind her. They're going to jump it up at midcourt when we come back to Honolulu right after this. You look at this select team and you think that perhaps this could be the core of maybe the 2014. Any chance that you could come back and give it another go around? 
No, no, no. You do it once, and, you, and now I'm a fan. I'm loving it. All right, thanks a lot, Tara. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Fran. Coach? Well, Tara's collegiate team ought to be pretty decent this year. They've got everybody just about coming back. And that was a consuming job. It was interesting to hear her react to Fran's question about would she do it again? And uh, you had a period of time where immediately following her appointment as Olympic coach where she was away from her program for an entire year. And Stanford had struggled in recent history in women's college basketball, Beth, and that was an unusual situation. So you wonder what Tara's thoughts are looking back. Did she enjoy the experience? Of course, she was an Olympic coach. And they should be back near the top this year, but it's really taken four years to get over that uh, sort of a hangover to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, no question. I don't think uh, your recruiting can be the same without the head coach being right there. Edwards lays it in. Teresa Two more for Teresa. The 36-year-old out of Cairo, Georgia, has played over 200 games internationally for the United States. And there is a fast break point. So fast break points and points off turnovers. Just about a 20-point advantage now in terms of the points in the paint as well. Or that defense is just smothering. McCain launches to try and beat the shot clock. Front rims it. I don't think there's any team in the world that runs transition basketball any better than the United States. And why? Well, you've got the strongest front court in the world. And you rebound the ball extremely well. You dominate the glass. You get great outlet passes. And the leak out. Cheryl swoops on that particular instance. It was Teresa Edwards. This U.S. team doors, not only do they leak, they flood. Yeah. <laughs> Those lanes, they get everybody out of Goes left to right as well as anyone in women's basketball. Good preparation here, though, for Team USA. Because, Doris, that's probably going to be something they'll see at the Olympics as Ralph wins one in and out. Teams are going to force them to shoot that outside shot. Look at I think for us, it, you know, every situation was different, especially when we were on the college tours or we were playing a select team. It was it was always about us and getting better, whether it's us pressing, whether it's us trapping, whether it was our transition, you know, our ability to um, get the ball inside and be efficient, our ability to knock down shots. Like, it was always about us. But, you know, we played extremely hard. Um, you know, we had some 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 goals where, you know, we wanted to be the first one to score. You know, we wanted to out rebound our opponents. Um, we wanted to keep them within a certain, you know, point. You know, so, um, you know, 2000, we were a very good defensive team. Um, we had a lot of defensive minded players on that team, like myself, Yolanda Griffith, you know, Ruthie Bolton, Cheryl Swoops, you know, we had some Delisha Milton Jones. I mean, we had more defensive minded players on that team um, than we possibly did in, in 96. But um, we, we were aggressive. Um, and like I said, we just we played hard. Um, and we didn't like, we definitely didn't like getting scored on. And the United States shows a little zone. It was interesting talking to Bonnie when she said, you know, when we were in Taiwan competing for the Jones Cup, we were the athletic team. <laughs> And the tide is turned. Now she's forced to play a little zone. Swoops again. Another takeaway by Team USA defensively. Boom, Hallifield with the finish. Hallifield. And Henriksen looks over at Dee Cantner and is begging for a foul call on the strip. Eight different scores here in the first half for Team USA. Good balance. Ralph blocked by Griffith. All shaken to a smile at that one. Yeah. Bonnie has very little to smile about and pleading her case now with Sally Bell. Didn't get the ear from Dee Cantor. She said, let me try the other one. <laughs> and you don't have as many options in FIBA. There's only two officials, not three. It was a little different in Taiwan facing China, Korea, Japan, and Malaysia yeah. at the Jones Cup. <laughs> Griffith battling Chantel Anderson. The Fantastic freshman at Vanderbilt. 
Call number 15, Chantel Anderson. It's her first personal 17. Home 10, 25 points against Kansas and 23 against Louisiana Tech. Her NCAA tournament Ferdinand. debut 11, Jackson, last March for Jim Foster's team. Now, how much she was fifth Gray. in the SEC in scoring? I mean, that's an impressive effort. And the field goal percentage for Anderson, 58%. You're talking about one of the most yep. physical leagues in college basketball. Swoops to McCray. Can't track that one down. And let's check in now with Fran Harris. All right, I'm standing with the youngest member of the 2000 Olympic team. Shamiko, how has this experience been for you so far? Um, it's definitely been a learning process, but it's great that I get the opportunity to play with so many great um, veterans, especially Teresa. I mean, this is our fifth Ole um, Olympics, and I can just learn so much from her. Any chance that you can lure Teresa Edwards to coach you next year in the WNBA? Um, they're going to have to pay her, you know, but, you know, Teresa's a good friend of mine, and I just enjoy being around her and the camaraderie we have, and hopefully, you know, I, I, would, I would love for her to come coach Washington. What do you anticipate heading into Sydney next week? Um, you know, just for us to go out there and work hard and bring home this gold medal. As you can see, you have followed us throughout this um, training process, and we just worked so hard, you know, and we expect nothing less than go out there and win that gold medal. All right, enjoy the experience. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, friend. Pretty play there, Deanna Jackson with her first basket. Yeah, wise, wise move, Beth. She used her body, created a, just a little bit of breathing room, and yo, despite the length, couldn't get a piece of it. Her last nine games of the season for UAB, she was averaging about 24 a night. And UAB made that terrific run in the NCAAs. Jackie Stiles off the dribble. Griffith is there once again. <laughs> wow. That is some defense right there. Griffith with her second block of the first half. The U.S. off and running against the select team. Because Team USA has been able to play its game, they've been out and running, they've been playing tremendous pressure defense. You talked to Nell Forner, she said, I like the mindset. She said, are we there? No, and I'm glad we're not peaking yet. She said, but defensively, the mindset is starting to come around. And Styles, you see the Mid Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, Bethel. Springfield, Missouri, you drive down the lane and you don't see Yolanda Griffin <laughs> standing smack dab in the middle of your path. <laughs> she has had a tremendous career for the Bears, over 2,300 points with one more year still to go. Tara Walters coming on. Misses the 10-footer, now Ferdinand in transition. Coach Bonnie Hendrickson really high on her performance this summer out of LSU. Now you gotta like the intensity. Ferdinand, one of the players, as you mentioned, that you like the athleticism, the speed that she brings, but how about the hustle of swoops to get back and get a piece of that basketball? Griffith takes on two to get the rebound. Staley and then filling the lane is Nikki McCray. He had Nikki McCray, who was one of the fastest players I've ever coached. That kid was like shot out of a cannon. I mean, just so, so, so quick. And she could pressure the ball. Like her on-ball defense was some of the best that we had, maybe the best that we had on the team. You could put her guarding the point guard and she could really disrupt an offense from ever getting started. I mean, she was just incredibly, she was just a dog on the ball. From one of the best in the business. Three straight trips to the final four as a collegian. Played with the Charlotte Sting, and the knees have held up remarkably well. Played for Olympic gold in 96, Staley. But you wonder how much go she's got left. And number 12, and especially now that she is a, a little more mature, uh, age-wise, the, the Philly kid, you really see a lot more mo cheeks in her game. And she really styled a lot of her play after growing up in Philly and watching the Sixers. Yeah, how about the transition now? It's, it's, it's a great point because in her generation, you grew up emulating men, and now there's a whole generation of young women who can emulate Dawn Staley. Holt's flaw. Nice move in the air to the basket. Shamik was got six.
Lori Payne. She's out there with Schumacher, Bird, Styles, and Cooper. It's Holt Squaw, Walters, Staley, McCray, and Williams for the U.S. team. And Bird with a pretty pass once again. As I can go back and watch the game, I can appreciate those players so much more on that select team and just go, oh, my gosh, what were they thinking? Because we were, you know, that was a pretty, um, pretty strong display of ball by us. The one that really, of course, catches my eye is Sue Bird. I mean, she was just a baby, you know, back then. But absolutely, you could see her game was there. And look at her. She's still playing today. That's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing, the longevity of her career and how she just kept getting better and better. So for her to get that experience, I can only imagine that how that – really fueled her fire to be that Olympian on the next team. You know, like here she is, she's about, she's going for her fifth Olympics uh, gold medal. So for her to get that experience and maybe that, you know, we won by a lot, that, that probably fueled her fire to go, that, that's never happening to me again. You know, who knows? But that's the one that really stands out to my, in my mind is Sue Bird because she was just, she's just a great player, great player. Shooting. Labeled as the shooter. The ones that really shine are the ones that, like Styles, can add that dribble drive to their game and really keep defenses on it. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, Bonnie Henriksen talked about the fact that she had said to Styles, you need a medium-range jump shot to go along with everything else you've got. And if she can pull up off the dribble and uh, shoot it with consistency, because you know off the drive she's gotten to the free throw line an awful lot at yep. Southwest Missouri State. That led the country in attempts and free throws made last season. McCray finds the space in the short corner and is tripped up by Cooper. On number 14, Camille Cooper, the first personal. Coming up at halftime here in Honolulu. A closer look at Lisa Leslie. The last row highlights. There have shots. been plenty of them for Lisa and her Team USA teammates here in the first half. That's coming up at halftime here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Both the uh, dream teams, the men and the women, out here in Hawaii training, as well as the United States softball team as they prepare to win another goal. The U.S. women's teams are uh, going in as prohibitive favorites in many of the team sports in Sydney. Styles, there is that mid-range pull-up you were talking about there. But she's just got a very strong power dribble off the first step, and that's enough to get her by. And how about that feet kick? That's an unusual <laughs> shooting form. Get a little extra height on that one. <laughs> if you create the illusion of the extra height by bending those legs upward. <laughs> Holtzclaw with the pass. When you're 5'8 going up against 6'7, you'll try anything to get it up there again. Shamiqua now with nine. Bird's pass picked off by Williams. And I'm surprised Gino Oriema didn't, despite the fact that he's with the Olympic team, get all over Bird for that pass, because if he had, she had made that in the regular season, she'd be taken out. He almost went, we're looking for him to jump off, up off the Olympic team. Thing. That's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> that will be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Gina will be going head to head against Bonnie Henriksen next season as Virginia Tech moves into the Big East to play basketball next season. Yeah, Henriksen has done a great job at Virginia Tech, 70 and 24 through three full seasons. Had the great year, her second year there, 28 and three was sen sensational in the Atlantic 10 Conference. She's got uh, Terry Williams and Amy Wetzel coming back as McRae tries to beat the buzzer and goes. Uh, standing half of basketball, you have to be pleased. Not only offensively, you get 50 back, but your defensive effort was outstanding. Basketball has been a game changer for me. It's helped me grow as a teammate and a leader. By establishing standards for youth development, 
USA Basketball is making a difference for players of all ages. Through education and training, they're helping to make the game safer and more fun. Make sure your child is taught the right way. Ensure you're the best coach you can be. To learn more, visit usab.com or download the USA Basketball mobile app. Carter on the steal. Long three. Puts it in. Vince Carter. Nice beat back to Richardson. Some flash of their own. Ray Allen right to the hole. Oh, Ray Allen. Williams inside. Blocked by Vince Baker. Two on uh -oh. one. Uh -oh. Carter. <laughs> oh. Vince Carter. College All-Stars that won the gold medal for the U.S. Jones Cup squad earlier this summer doing battle here in Honolulu. Yolanda Griffith, Lucy bolton Hollowfield, Teresa Edwards, Lisa Leslie, and Nikki McCray starting it out in the second half for the United States. Leslie, nice feed, the no luck to McCray cutting back door. A good little find and the select team in a zone and Nikki just stays spread until she sees the defender turn her back and that's when she made her cut. Sue Bird and Kelly Schumacher from UConn are out there in white. Bird with the miss. Also Brooke Wyckoff out of Florida State. Camille Cooper from Purdue and Marie Ferdinand out of LSU starting out the second half for the USA select team. Bird going to be a junior, and we'll be back to see if the Connecticut Huskies can follow it up and go back to back for the national championship this season. We certainly wonder who their main competition is with Tennessee, who is the runner up, and Georgia is loaded. We had so much depth. We had so much depth at every position, and everybody brought something different you know, to the table. And in particular, that game, it was like the pros versus the the little babies. And they felt that. Um, and um, they just couldn't get anything going. Um, but you could tell there was a big gap from us being professionals and having played professionally versus, you know, those, those, um, those kids, those players being in college. It was big, more physical, it was faster. Um, we were in such great shape. Um, I, I mean, we scored a lot in transition. They just didn't have an answer for us at any position. And um, it was really fun to see. I mean, I, you know, I would come out or whether I'm on the bench, I'm, I'm cheering. I'm like, well, somebody's, I mean, Shamiqua Holzka, I remember her, you know, playing extremely well, you know, and it's just like, wow, you know, let her just do her thing. And you're just, you got a chance to get a break. So we were just so happy for one another, but we were just very deep at every position. McCray. The kick out to Edwards, and now Lisa Leslie with the skip. Fulton Hollifield, 17 footers good. Yeah, if there's a weakness on this team, it's whether or not they can consistently shoot the basketball. Yes, no, Fortner, what are your biggest concerns? She said, well, number one, time and score. She will wake up in a cold sweat on occasion thinking of those possible scenarios. And then, you know, on those particular nights where you get an opponent, opponent who plays their best basketball and perhaps you don't shoot it well, and that's really the only scenario in which you can see the United States losing a game in the Olympics. If somebody finds a way to pack it in and really make it tough for them to score down low or get out on the break, a lot of the pressure would then fall to Bolton Hollifield, Katie Smith, Edwards or McCray to start putting them up from outside. Well, it's been Bolton Hollifield whose history would indicate she'd be your best option to hit those big shots. United States down. Significant with 146 in the World Championship to Russia, and it was Ruthie who sticks back-to-back -back threes to get them back, and they end up winning it. The United States, of course, the 96 gold medalist, who also won the World Championship to They will be busy for the next couple of weeks getting ready for Sydney. They'll head over to Australia and will play four games in five days. Culminating with a, uh, a matchup against the Australians, which will be their final game before their opener September 16th against South Korea. 
And there's been so much talk about Lauren Jackson, the player for Australia, six foot five. And by many people who follow women's basketball say she is one of the best players in the world. All the WNBA GMs know her name. And would love to have her on board next summer. You know, there's talk that she will most certainly be the number one put pick, but will Seattle keep her? Will Lynn Dunn keep her, or will she make some trades to try to get numbers of quality players? And that's saying something, because this year's senior class is sensational, and there will be a lot of talent coming out. We've also got to think about Russia in the Olympics, a team that did push you in that world championship situation and has Svetlana Brosimova mm -hmm. from Connecticut. Elena Baranova, if her knee has been rehabilitated satisfactorily. Bird. The drive, look the pass, knocked away by Team USA. McCray leaves it off for Ruth. Being the Olympic coach comes with a lot of, um, of pressure because if you're coaching the U.S., there's no other outcome than the gold medal. You know, that's... The pressure of that can be intense and extreme, but when, you, when you're surrounded by the roster that we had in 2000, oh my gosh, that definitely helps your stress level. But when you're playing on the second best team in the world, home court, Australia, there was a lot of stress to attach to that gold medal game. They give Australia the benefit of the doubt for that silver because they are on their home turf and Brazil, a team that really Played a great first half against the United States, but the depth wore that team down. It was a blowout in the second half. And I'd anticipate you'd see that an awful lot in the Olympics where the depth of the United States, their six through ten players could start for most other teams. Relentless pressure, regardless of who's coming in off the bench. Griffith with the rebound. McCray to Ruthie once more. Ruthie now into double digits with 10. Oh, Leslie select. a dozen as the select team calls a timeout to try and stop a 12-0 run by Team USA. And that's just against a man-to-man, -man. and then we have something against the, the, a zone defense, and then out-of-bounds plays and stuff we do on defense that I haven't learned. I came in the first day of practice and learned seven new plays, and you know that's the part that I'm so concerned with, coming in here, being able to learn what it is that I need to do. But you know what, whatever it is, offensively, defensively, with the help of all my teammates, and they've been wonderful. You know, me coming in here, they've helped me learn the offenses as much as possible. I think I'll be fine. All right, go get him in Sydney, Cheryl. Right, thank you. Back to you, Beth. Thanks a lot, Fran and Cheryl. Ruthie Bowen Hollifield. Off on the jumper, tapped back out though by Leslie and then saved by Ruthie. Teresa Edwards. <laughs> Leslie to McCray and then a nice speed by Nikki to Yolanda Griffith. We talked about uh, Nell Fortner. I asked her about the chemistry. Did it change at all? And Cheryl only joined them two days ago, but she said no. She said the general consensus among the players is there are two players you're not leaving the country without. And Lisa and Cheryl immediately come to mind. <laughs> The reach in, Griffith trying to strip it loose from Deanna Jackson. And it's going to be a busy summer for Cheryl Swoops. Fourth title with the Comets, the MVP, the defensive player of the year, and she wins the scoring championship as well. Her first ever, it was neck and neck with Katie Smith for that scoring title throughout the bulk of the WNBA season. But the single most complete women's basketball player. Jackson, yeah, you've got a, a player who's got a phenomenal first step. She likes going left. She's got outstanding, and I'm saying NBA range on her jump shot. Great defensive player, shoots the gap as well as anyone in the world. Unquestionably, the best women's basketball player in the world. Cheryl has six points today after the 18 yesterday against Brazil. And the free throw ends a 20-0 run for Team USA. Dawn Staley, Katie Smith, Natalie Williams, Shamiqua Holtzclaw, and Galicia Milton. And Milton gets the jumper. Nice execution there. You go short corner, and Shamiqua wisely looks opposite. In that game, you just want to dominate. You know, you want to you want to show that. You're, you're the best, you know, you're, this is the reason why you're on this team. Like, we are who we are for that reason. And, and you sent me the link of 
you know, when I played on the college select team, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, and I remember it. I remember Coach Summit. That was really my only time uh, Pat, you know, Summit coached me. You know, I got recruited by her, but she was our coach. And we got smacked, you know, against the 96 team who, you know, I, I mean, they were, if I, there was no other team that was as conditioned to just like a well-oiled machine than those guys. And they just ran us out of the gym. Um, and, you know, I look at that roster and just so that all the familiar names, and then, you know, I look at that roster with the Birdie and then some of the other styles, and, you know, Schumacher, Wyckoff. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, it was about us showing and doing and playing at a level that didn't matter what the score was, didn't matter what was going on, that we're going to go out there and the effort will be at this level at all times. So it, it didn't matter because you can't can't get up for one game down for another and just have an inconsistency and I think that's the one thing that we do is we try to show up and be consistent with what we do no matter who we face. Ralph with the box out of Natalie Williams. Thank you. This is what is coming up for Nell Fortner's club. France and Slovak Republic. Poland and Australia. Daly. And Katie Smith. More opportunities for Katie with the jumper here in the second half. And she buries the first one and this uh, the next couple. I mean, here's a player who shot with remarkable consistency in the WNBA season from great range. So a little bit surprising. And you, the great question by Fran about fatigue. Well, are Katie's legs maybe feeling the weight of what she was asked to do at Minnesota? Katie was the second leading scorer in the league this year behind Cheryl. Now Holtzclaw off the dribble baseline, spins and will go to the free throw line. Oh. How much better she is when she gets Anderson, close. She's got second, great second, spin second, ability fourth, and the fade, which in makes Shamiqua very select, tough to eight, block. For Jackie Styles. Lori Payne comes on for the USA Select squad, along with her Shea Ralph and Brandon McCain, Chantel Anderson, and Deanna Jackson. So much talk during the course of the year about Shamiqua's physical condition. She and Nikki and Vicki Bullitt led Washington into the playoffs in the WNBA for the first time. Tremendous success as a rookie, Shamiqua. But Daryl Walker, after Nancy Darsh resigned, said, hey, you need to get in shape, drop some weight. And if you're going to be a leader, it's a day in and day out consistent effort. And Shamika has plenty of room to grow as a basketball player. 12 months out of the year now. In the WNBA season, and a lot of these players will choose to go and play internationally to stay fresh during the winter. Staley to Katie Smith. And Smith gets one to drop. Fouls on Brandy McCain. Ball number four, Brandy McCain. It's her fourth personal. Under 12 to go, 71-20, Team USA. Now, a lot of people think that the alternates are, are good look at what we could see in the 2004 Olympics. Do you feel that way? Definitely, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of people that's out there looking forward to 2004, like myself, knowing exactly where it's at in Greece, kind of excited about it, knowing that we'll get our opportunity. Then for the older players to go ahead and play, get this one in Australia, definitely want a goal again. And we just want to take care of business and represent the um, United States whenever we get there. Now, I know you're going to Sydney. Are you one of those rabid fans that's going to paint their faces red, white, and blue? No, I'm not going I'm not gonna paint my face. I'm gonna enjoy myself and have a lot of fun. I mean, this is great to be around the girls. They're a lot of fun. I just wanna learn from the older group because they're gonna help me. All right, have a good time. We'll see you later. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Talk to you, Beth. Thank you very much, Fran and Shannon. A tough spot to be in because you know they want to be playing over there and they have done a great deal to help this team prepare. McLean Johnson, AZ Bullet Johnson, Keisha Sales, and Tina Thompson. AZ, the lone player on that list who was a gold medalist in 96, so she knows and has had the flavor of that. And really, she was the one who sort of wavered early when they were putting the core group together as to whether or not she wanted to participate again. And of course, Fran was an alternate for the 88 team. Lori Payne 
hits a three. And the first of the game. Katie Smith. How about their 0 of 8 from behind the arc? A combined 0 of their last 14. Team USA from three-point territory. Cannot get the long ball to drop here in the last two days in Honolulu. Ralph has it knocked loose by Staley. Well, it's not been a sensational day for the select team, but Miss Payne with plenty of range. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> that was a good 23 feet out there from just inside the arc. A sensational year for her as a rookie. Pac-10 all-freshman team, and there's the, the three-point shooting we were talking about, Beth, and we've made note of it all broadcast. It's a weakness that teams will try to exploit. Now, the depth up front and their ability to dominate glass and get out and run may not make that a factor, but boy, you wonder. Old squad battling Ralph. The only three-pointer, Lori Payne, so far today. The leading scorer for UW and set a freshman scoring record for the Huskies last year. Felicia Milton draws the foul. Milton can't get it to go. Leslie and company have just dominated in the paint and on the run. They'll leave tonight on a very late plane. Team USA go to Adelaide, as you mentioned. Sue Bird. They're throwing a little 1-3-1 one, one at the uh, select team here. Throwing a few different looks. <laughs> Staley has Smith winner uh, with her. Oh. oh, what a pass, and Milton is there to finish it up. How about that look? I see you, Dawn Staley. That's shades of Virginia right there. Wow. Little show on the go, Dawn Staley. <laughs> yeah, she saw that graphic at the start of the show. <laughs> Point guard said, I'll show you concerns. <laughs> Other people have to be concerned. Well, there's no question that Staley and Teresa Edwards are the leaders of this basketball team. Players look to them. T. Edwards because she's been there so many times before, and Staley because she's just got a tremendous relationship with all the players. On the drive, Styles, and she draws the foul. It was really good to to see the girls that were in college and, you know, you know, they were vying to be, you know, us one day and just really taking it all in. Um, I think they really enjoyed the moment and, you know, and just knew that it is hard work, you know, to do what we do. And um, but it was good. They had a chance to compete against us and, you know, again, just really learn, um, you know, from us. And um, and they, they had so much respect for us as well. Veteran Dawn Staley. Probably the best U.S. team ever assembled and could be a very different looking team that will head to the 2004 Olympics. You wonder if this will be the last go round for the likes of Staley and Edwards. Ruthie Bolton Hollifield. There are some young players, however. Leslie. Yep. There's Shamiqua. There's Teresa. They 18 different USA national teams Teresa has competed on. Remarkable number. She is the poster girl for the United States Olympic basketball team. Getting set for her fifth trip. Swoops. Carve is getting a bit antsy there. The shot clock had dwindled all the way down to seven seconds before Team USA put it up. <laughs> I think that may be the first time it's been below 10 or 15. Marie Ferdinand. And once again, United States on the run. Staley in the pass behind 
Shamik will hold Squaw. Teresa Edwards has played in her 201st USA basketball game tonight, a US record. She already has the Olympic record for the United States, 24 games played. And she's got more assists and steals than anybody else who has done the uniform. 80 to 25, Team USA with eight minutes to go. Sue Burt trying to get it done for the select team. Carter on the steal, long three, puts it in, and Vince Carter, nice beat back to Richardson. Some flash of their own. Ray Allen right to the hole. Oh, Ray Allen, Williams inside, blocked by Vince Baker. Two on uh -oh. one, three, kid. Uh -oh. Carter. <laughs> oh, Vince Carter. of Hawaii, the Stern Sheriff Center. Team USA in red against the USA Select Team. Some of the top college players from around the country assembled to try and challenge the United States. Cheryl swoops to try for three, and that's the first three-pointer of the game for Team USA. One for nine. And the exact spot on the floor where Nell Fortner feels like in the Olympics, they're gonna get shots. So there's two elbow extended out beyond the three-point arc. Cheryl now with 11 points. Off the front rim by Bird, Holtzclaw. The run out, Edwards with swoops and Holtzclaw. He leaves it off with Shamiqua. Shamiqua Holtzclaw. So you can understand why there's great chemistry. I mean, these players are used to being the focal points in their WNBA teams, and here always... I, I love the Olympics, look. like, especially the South Olympics. I mean, I watch all sports, and, you know, stuff I've never heard of. I'm trying to be a fan and sharing, and it's just, like, it's just bigger than the sport. So it's just a pride thing of, like, we're the best in the world, <laughs> first and foremost. Like, you got a gold medal, and you can flat out say it. And then a lot of pride just of representing, you know, your, your, you know, your country, your university, your hometown, like, you know, your friends, family, everybody has had a hand in it. You're kind of like, they were along for the ride, which is kind of the coolest part. Now Walters back into the United States. Now Milton, we skip to Shamiqua. Kara spinning on Camille Cooper, who gets a piece of it and knocks it out of bounds. Five on the shot clock. And four, Team USA. Five players in double digits, including Griffith and Leslie with a dozen apiece. Jackie Stiles has seven, and Kelly Schumacher has six. That's got to be the hardest earned seven points Jackie <laughs> Stiles has ever put up. She's thinking, oh boy, get me back against some of this college. Where's the college freshman? Let's bring them on. <laughs> she will be fun to watch. And her as Walters gets her first basket. Jackie tries the baseline. player who, as you said, with LSU in the SA tournament, Beth, they made that great run. How about that group? That was a team with Salami and Gomez and Coolidge. I believe, uh, who was their point guard? Cook. As Walter takes the basket. Wrong. The guy with the headband, Reese. Reese. <laughs> and Haywood. Haywood. Haywood, that's right. <laughs> the white shadow. Oh, I love that show. <laughs> Jackie Styles off the mark. Everybody for Team USA has dropped one in with the exception of Don Staley. Alicia Milton with two more, and the US Select Team wants a timeout. Team USA getting close to the century mark here in Hawaii. What's it like to play for Nell Ford? There are a lot of players talk about her being the ultimate players coach. Oh, she is a 
you know, a player's coach. Um, she gets on you when you're not doing um, the things that you're capable of doing on the court, um, when you're not giving your 150 percent. You know, it's just, you know, she's a good coach. And, um, you know, we all want to go to Sydney and win a gold medal. But we got to take um, take care of business here in the States first. And then uh, when we get to Sydney, uh, you know, just stay focused. And, uh, you know, I'm having fun tonight. I'm having a lot of fun today. <laughs> all right, have fun in Sydney, yo. Thank you. Back to you, Beth. Thanks a lot, friend. Good put back there by Schumacher. And the foul will be called. The whistle goes against. I believe they're going to give it to Edwards, the offensive foul. Uh, Yo plays as hard as anyone and defensively. How about that rejection? <laughs> Couple of blocks. He put a roof there over Jackie Styles and also swatted the Shea Ralph shot earlier. Three steals and five rebounds as well, just for good measure, to go with the perfect night from the floor. A tremendous athleticism, great length, good footwork, excellent pursuit of the basketball, tremendous shot blocking ability. And outside of Cheryl Swoops, she is also one of the top three players in the world, no question. And give Swoops number one. How about one A for Griffith, the way she's been playing lately? One A, and I'm just dying to get a look at Lauren Jackson, who I have not seen play, but will have the opportunity when the United States faces Australia in the Olympics. Edwards tries to track it down, and the select team will get it. Nell is something, man. She's got, she got a little fire to her. She was always about making sure you kind of win the day, you know? And I think I think one of the quotes, I, I use it to this day, I think one of them that she uh, gave us was, um, if you're going to be somewhere, be all there, you know what I mean? Just because you can't be anywhere else. So just be here, be, you know, all the way locked in and be present. But it was fun every single day. Played for Jody Conrad of Texas, was an assistant for Leon Barmore at Louisiana Tech. An assistant on the 96 Olympic team with Carl Vandiver. You know, was responsible for their conditioning program, scouting opponents. So their start was at Stephen F. Austin, yeah. remember Beth, under Gary Blair, one of the more respected minds in women's college basketball now at Arkansas. It's been a steady progression for Fortner, and now Two weeks away from trying to secure the gold medal. Anna Jackson out to Lori Payne. Good gauge for this select team and as to what they've got to keep working on in their game as they prepare for their collegiate season. It's hard to believe just a couple months away now. Randy McCain. Wow. Rattles one in and out. I'll tell you what, five foot three, you wonder about her ability to get shots off. That little step back move will create some space. Wow, that was pretty. That one was three quarters of the way down before it popped back out. McCain was all SEC as a freshman. And now trying to come back from injuries. 241 to go here in Hawaii. Regal by Buick will donate $1,000 to a charity in Yolanda's name. United States will head off to Australia later tonight. They've got four more games to help them prepare for the Olympics. And Chantel Anderson gets her first basket, the sophomore to be at Vanderbilt. Excellent pass right there by McCain. That's a sweet pull up off the glass. And once again, the SEC, where Anderson and McCain reside, will be tough. Tennessee and Georgia we know about. Mississippi State, LSU should be tough again. Yeah, you think Andy Landers is chomping at the bit to get that crew of players back on the floor. <laughs> Kelly and Coco Miller, Tawana McDonald, Tweedy Nolan. Of course, it was Rutgers. Who prevented him from getting to the Final Four. That stingy defense of C. Vivian Stringer. Rutgers and Notre Dame will be back to challenge UConn in the Big East, and perhaps Virginia Tech will be thrown into the mix now. 
on the drive. McKay, uh, McRae foul. <laughs> we think that, that group will be uh, will be right there. And of course, they'll all be chasing Gino Ariemis club for the title. And Mississippi State on that list. And Latoya Thomas, the breakout yeah. SEC tournament where she just flat out lit people up. Certainly somebody will be on a short list of player yeah. of the year candidates. Duke's got a great rookie class coming in. And Terry Cole's done a super job with Oklahoma. They have everybody back with the exception of their All-American, Felicia Whaley. Got a good look at Stacey Dales of Team Canada last week with this USA national team. And the player can go one, two, and three. A very, very nice basketball play. And Shuey will return in the middle for Gino Oriema. Cooper at Purdue. They have a terrific group of freshmen coming in, as well as a new point guard in all likelihood. And the head coach of Purdue, another Leon Barmore yeah. disciple. Christy Curry, an outstanding job in her first year. Offensive foul called against Team USA. Ball number 11, Kara Walters, her first personal six team foul. Bonnie Hendrickson, uh, assisted by Stephanie Gately from St. Joe's and Rusty Ponton from Grambling. And of course, Peggy Gillum, the head coach over at Texas A&M, who is one of the all-time greats at Ole Miss, and is the other assistant coach for the Team USA. I think of all the college basketball coaches, particularly on the women's side, who come out of Philadelphia. Gino is one of those, but Gately, the assistant on the select team, another yep. Philly. We send them the coaching ranks, and all of Philadelphia watching this one. Tough night for the select team. Lori Payne hits a jumper to beat the shot clock. And a half a minute to go in Hawaii. Another impressive performance by Team USA. As they were uh, able to force their will onto the select team. Well, that 96 team set a precedent in women's basketball. It spawned the WNBA. I don't know if I had my style, but um, that suit, that gold, the suit I wore in the gold medal game, um, I bought in Hawaii when we were on our, on our way over um, to Australia. So I found it in Hawaii and, um, and wore it for that gold medal game. I don't know where I came up with the rest, but anyway. <laughs> We've got four tenths to go. Team USA. With five players and double figures, a balanced attack. The defense was stifling once again. And the win is in the books. And for Nell Fortner, it's her 89th. More than any coach has won for the women in USA basketball history. And we will be back. Carter on the steal. Long three. Puts it in. Vince Carter. Nice feed back to Richardson. Some flash of their own. Ray Allen right to the hole. Williams inside, blocked by Vince Baker. Two on uh -oh. one play, kid. Uh -oh. Carter! <laughs> uh oh! Vince Carter!